What is up? What's up? It's Ricky Mel, and um, we're back. I saw a few comments about this story. Sorry, I showed up late. This uh, notification thing. So I know that the thirty-minute notification work worked. Um, but the other day somebody was telling me that they got the thirty minute, but then when it actually went live, it didn't they didn't get it. So I'm trying to see right now real quick if a new one went out. No, it didn't. Yeah, so still got problems. Yeah. I'll give it a minute to see, but yeah, it looks like it didn't go out. Still having the notification issues. What's up? What's up? What's up? There is this pretty weird story out here in Florida. Seems like there's more to this than meets the eye. Um, let me show you this video clip. Caught on video here. I'll show you this. Check this out. How wild this is in broad daylight. Oh, here a woman possibly carjacked by an armed. Possibly, bro. Dude's holding a gun to her. Suspect. Now that woman and her SUV are missing. This is News 6 at Noon. I'm Bridget Ellison. And I'm Justin Warmoth. A witness recorded this video as a man went up to the woman's window armed with a gun before getting inside the Dodge Durango. This happened just before 6 o'clock last night on East Lake Drive and Tuscawilla Road just outside of Winter Springs. News 6's Mark Lehman has the latest on this investigation. You can only imagine this was a terrifying situation for the woman who appeared to be carjacked and confusing for other drivers. The woman was stopped right here in the left-hand turn lane at this intersection. Another driver noticed something wasn't right and then started recording. Here's another look at that video from a witness. It was at this intersection just before 6 last night. You can see a man in a black hoodie got out of a car and pointed a gun at the driver of a white Dodge Durango. The Seminole County Sheriff's Office says that man was wearing what appears to be a Halloween mask and got into the back seat of the SUV before both cars drove off. Investigators say the woman who appears to have been carjacked the Seminole County just before six last That's at this wild. intersection. Another driver noticed something wasn't right and then started recording. Here's another look at that video from a witness. It was at this intersection just before six last night. You can see a man in a black hoodie got out of a car and pointed a gun at the driver of a white Dodge Durango. I don't know. What would you do in that situation? Somebody pulls up to you. I mean, walks up to your car. It's it's always hard to say, right? Like hindsight twenty twenty, but I mean, where can she go? It's kind of oncoming traffic. I feel like I'd I fucking hit the gas and swerve to the right. I don't know. What, what would you guys do? And and this is again with the whole carrying situation, right? Because of all this all this nuttiness that's going on. By the way, on my second account, I have no notification for this live. Um, what would you do? I, I guess I, I don't know. Right. The Seminole County Sheriff's Office says that man was wearing what appears to be a Halloween mask and got into the back seat of the SUV before both cars drove off. That's I guess he instructed her to open the back. They say the woman who appears to have been carjacked is 31-year-old Catherine Alta Garcia Guerrero de Aguas Villas, who is from Homestead, Florida. You know, deputies are asking for help in finding her or any of the vehicles involved in this. The victim's Durango has a Florida tag of KVF F222. Uh, there's also a large for sale decal and phone number written in plain view on the back window. Investigators say a second suspect drove immediately behind the Durango in a green Acura Dan with an obscured license plate and out here at the intersection where it happened we haven't seen any surveillance cameras so that witness video is crucial in all of this the big questions that remain are who are these suspects and where did they take the victim anyone who sees the victim's vehicle is urged to not approach it but instead call 911 so they came out with a press conference that has more information and the details are pretty as much information out Bizarre. as you possibly could uh, last night. Uh, what we are now investiga investigating uh, is a homicide. And what I would like to do is to talk you through uh, the entire timeline, the circumstances, and the details. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, Catherine Aguas Vivas was a U.S. citizen. She had lived in the United States for the past five years. 
She had established uh, U.S. citizenship. Uh, her home country was the Dominican Republic. Uh, she and her husband were associated. Uh, mm. Husband is still associated with two businesses in South Florida. Uh, her residency is in Homestead, and the businesses are a barbershop and a, and a beauty salon. She, she left South Florida yesterday driving the white Dodge Durango that we put out with the video that we had yesterday. We think that she left South Florida uh, just after noon. Uh, we know at around 2 o'clock uh, the vehicle was seen traveling northbound in Jupiter. And Jupiter. she came into Seminole County through downtown Orlando. Yeah, it's just pretty far up, kind of far up north from Homestead. Orlando in I-4. Uh, 3 30 4 o'clock uh, in the afternoon is when she is arriving here uh, she stops at a Seminole County gas station uh, it was a shell gas station located just south of 436 in 1792 uh, she pulls in there pumps gas uh, stays there for approximately eight minutes she travels from that location heading northbound on 1792 uh, into Seminole County and then ultimately gets into Castleberry and turns down Button Road and weaves through the back streets on East Lake through Winter Springs. Uh, about a half a mile before the intersection of East Lake Drive and Tuscawilla Road, and that's the location of the intersection that the video was released on, about a half a mile or so prior to that intersection, she started to notice that the green uh, Acura was behind her, and the Acura was actually ramming into her back bumper at that time. At that time, she picked up the phone and called her husband, uh, told her husband that she was being rammed, that there was somebody there that wow. was following her. The husband provided the advice to don't stop, don't stop anywhere. Uh, there are no known reports to the sheriff's office. And that's what I was going to say, too. Interesting not to call 911. I mean, I understand maybe calling your, your husband also, but like at some point not to call 911. Or policing authorities uh, made by either uh, Catherine or the husband that we're aware of. Vehicle stops at the intersection. As you can see from the video that we released last night, the Dodge uh, Durango is at the uh, first position at the intersection has the light, the only thing that's stopping her uh, is the light that's there. The uh, green Acura is directly behind. And although we don't have uh, visual evidence so far uh, uh, proving, we suspect that one of the occupants of the green Acura gets out of the Acura uh, wearing a black hoodie, uh, wearing a ski type of mask or a ninja mask as we've called it, mm. Uh, carrying what appears to be consistent with a uh, automatic uh, handgun, uh, consistent with a 10 millimeter handgun, which will come into play a little bit later uh, in my news conference. Points directly at the driver, Catherine, uh, tells her, we suspect, to unlock the door, which she does. He jumps in the rear uh, passenger seat behind the driver, and she immediately makes a U-turn. This is witnessed by the driver that's behind the vehicle. Another occupant inside the vehicle is the person that is filming from their cell phone uh, the video images that we have and that we've, we've released of the incident. She makes a U-turn at that intersection, probably heading, speculation here, but probably heading in a direction where, where the suspect does not want them to go. And we suspect that he orders her to turn around again and reapproach the intersection of East Lake and mm -hmm. Tuscola Road. Uh, at that intersection, they turn south and they're heading southbound, nearly rush hour traffic here, uh, southbound on Tuscola Road towards the Seminole Orange County line all the way down to Aloma. When they get to Aloma, they make a left. They go all the way across all lanes of traffic so they can get on 417 southbound. At this time, we suspect that Catherine is still driving under the armed uh, dictatorship of the suspect. Here's where you're going to go. Here's where you're going to drive. 
They drive southbound on 417, uh, likely getting off at the Narcusi Road exit. They travel the back roads of Narcusi, ultimately turning off onto Boggy Creek Road into Osceola County, where there was a, a newer construction area uh, that was set off in a little bit of a distance, but not so far away that eyewitnesses could not report hearing gunshots and ultimately the smoke of a fire that was set ablaze, uh, the vehicle that was set ablaze. Uh, by the time authorities uh, with the Osceola County Sheriff's Office arrived there, there was so much damage to the vehicle, you could not positively identify the vehicle, uh, but they also discovered that one person was deceased and found in that vehicle. Now it's important part, part here because we believe that to be the vehicle and the decedent to be Catherine, but we have to positively confirm that through the scientific method of, of uh, DNA examinations and, and dental records. But from all accounts of looking at the scene, it looks like the vehicle and is consistent to everything that we, we've seen so far. Uh, in addition to that, there was 12, uh, 12 shell casings there of 10 millimeter rounds mm. and one projectile that was located on the ground at that location. Uh, circumstances leading up. Follow-up investigation, uh, the, uh, the initial report that was provided to us was Catherine was traveling to Central Florida to visit with family members. So, so here's, here's the even more weird shit, right? Check this out. I haven't listened to this presser, but I read the article. We know of no family members that are living in Central Florida. So the story is she was going up to their visit family or whatever, but there's, they don't have family there. All right. And I'm almost wondering if it's like what Chris said, like they're just people owe money. They had two businesses. I don't know, you know, and they pull up on her. They ram the car a couple of times, walk up to her broad daylight, force her to like let this guy in the car. The car gets found on fire, it was found ablaze, and witnesses reported hearing gunshots near a construction site. Ah. Uh, the time that she was in Seminole County was less than an hour, and we have no knowledge of her uh, or the suspect, quite frankly, uh, living, doing business, or being in Seminole County uh, prior to this mm -hmm. incident. The timeline uh, between approximately 5.30 in the afternoon yesterday when we got the call for service of what appeared to be a carjacking, robbery, kidnapping. Uh, we responded to the scene, uh, as we typically do, as an urgent type of response just moments later and have been working the investigation ever since that point in time. It, it's about one hour and 45 minutes from the video that was released at that intersection of East Lake Drive and Tuscawilla Road, an hour and 45 minutes later is when the call for service of the vehicle on fire and the gunshots in Osceola County. Uh, anybody who is familiar with the area, uh, during rush hour, it is probably nearly an hour driving time between this location and that location. We suspect it was a direct route between here going down Tuscawilla Road, getting on uh, 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 ultimately um, 417, heading southbound, and going right to that location uh, to commit this murder and homicide. Uh, we do feel uh, that the, the occupants of the green Acura, uh, both the driver and at least one other person that got out of the car and entered into the Durango, uh, knew exactly uh, who they were following. Uh, we are, again, still putting together to try to explain a motive. There is no uh, criminal history here for either Catherine or her husband uh, in the United States. There's no clear uh, indicator why somebody would do this. Why would, would they target them? But we do feel and believe because uh, she was being followed. Uh, they were watching that. Uh, mm -hmm. She called her husband. The husband said, don't leave the car no reports to law enforcement that this was not a random act of violence. Right. That, that's weird, too. Again, back to the whole thing, like you guys are saying in the chat, no 911 call. You're being chased. The person's ramming your car. 
I mean, and if she didn't want to get off with the husband, why didn't he call? Like, I don't know, three way or use another phone. Like, like, no, this is what's going on. Strange, pretty strange, you know. Um, by the way, yeah, guys, for the people that are joining, something's going on with my channel. Notifications aren't going out till like two, three hours later. I appreciate the people that confirmed it for me earlier. So, um. Uh, use the alternative options that we have for now. I reached out to my YouTube manager and they forwarded it to the tech. I don't know if they're going to fix it or not. So in the meantime, just um, I have a mailing list. You can use the mailing list if you want to get my emails for lives or um, you can use Discord. Or I'm on Twitter, Facebook. I go simultaneously live. So if you want to pick an, one of the alternatives, you can so that at least when I go live, even if you don't use Twitter much or you don't use Facebook much, at least you get the notification and you come over here. That's fine, too. That the perpetrators knew exactly who they were going after, uh, why they were going after them is something that is a part of our ongoing uh, continuing investigation at this time. Uh, we've spoken to her husband, uh, family members, and that process will continue on. The green Acura is obviously a vehicle that we're incredibly uh, concerned about right now. Uh, we've mm -hmm. released that last night and we're releasing it again today. So if, if anybody saw the Durango or the green Acura uh, yesterday afternoon, witnessed any of this, that now in the aftermath is kind of putting some pieces together on something that you witnessed, we want to encourage you to contact the Seminole County Sheriff's Office or Crime Line where you can be eligible for a financial reward and can remain anonymous. We're specifically looking for any bit of information that you saw during this entire encounter, or uh, if you recognize this vehicle that had a partial. Yeah, so that vehicle is still, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they get rid of this vehicle. Like if they just, cause not there, I'm sure they're watching the TV, they're watching the news, just a suspect vehicle. An Acura TL Green late model. I wouldn't be surprised if this gets dumped somewhere or burnt or whatever. The suspects are still on the loose. They're pretty sure that the this woman was killed. I have a picture of her too. Partial obstruction to the tag. Uh, we don't think the obstruction to the tag was intentional. There was some mm. plastic covering that was on the on the uh, license plate. The plastic covering just had uh, become wore out, and it was difficult to capture the tag identifiers in the video again Shit, I would think any information about That's this think, particular right. tag is going to be in, incredibly important uh, to our ongoing investigation the next steps are to continue to work this with our detectives and our investigators we are working with the Osceola County Sheriff's Office and other stakeholders uh, in this process to put the pieces together uh, we do believe that that vehicle and Catherine are, are the uh, homicide victim in that location down in Osceola County and um, and as soon as we get some more information we'll be happy to to share that with you uh, with that I'll, I'll open for questions but before I do please continue to understand I'll answer whatever I can but this is a fluid ongoing uh, investigation that's 19 19 hours from start to finish right now and uh, uh, again with that I'll open sure. No knowledge of air tag or any tracking device, uh, but we simply don't know at this time. Uh, we, we don't know where the green Acura picked up her vehicle. We do believe it's probably uh, somewhere in the central Florida area, but there are pieces of evidence uh, that still need to be evaluated to see if we can identify where the green Acura started to trail. We do know that in Cassaberry, coming down East Lake, uh, they were there already a half a mile prior to that intersection. He was already ramming the back of the car. Mm -hmm. So with, with, um, with certainty, we can only say at that point. We just don't know where they started following or when she actually noticed at the time. She did notice and call her husband, but that was just moments before uh, the intersection and what we witnessed on, on, the, on the video. Sheriff, do any of your counterparts in South Florida help you open any light to this, whether or not they were having any kind of a 
hassle or harassment or dispute down there that might have spilled over up here? Our team is on the way down to uh, South Florida now. At, at this point in time, there is no explanation why somebody would target her, why, why she would uh, be followed like that. Of course, that's a part of the ongoing investigation that not only our detectives are, are going down there personally to meet with family and friends, but working with counterparts. But again, there is no prior reports, no knowledge of criminal history or activity. Um, it just really is unknown at this time. You said you, you said you didn't know if she had any, you can't document she had any family here. Did her husband know that she was traveling to Central Florida? Yet? Well, he was the one that uh, provided the information that, that it was likely that she was coming up here to, to visit family. So the husband said that, but there's no family there. Um, but again, he is somebody that we continue to talk with that, that is helpful to us in our investigation. Um, any information that he has, but the, but the report that we had received through those intimate contacts of her that she was here to visit uh, family. It sounds, like, it sounds like the husband knew more than what he was letting on because he told her not to stop. Is that your opinion? Right. You know, I, I, I'm not going to speculate. Uh, you know, anytime something like this happens, we always encourage 911 is like a, an absolute. You want authorities. You want somebody there. Um, but I, I can't explain why this would occur a half a mile before the intersection that she would call her husband. Her husband would say, don't stop. I could see somebody saying, don't stop, you know. But to not call 911 yeah, that's, 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 uh, is, is something that, um, that's that, again, I don't know the answer to that. Sure. Um, if it was me, I'm, I'm going to call 911 or I'm going to encourage my family and friends to call yeah, 911. To call 911 while you're on the phone. Super weird. That did not happen in this case. Sure. The vehicle that she's driving isn't, in fact, her or her family's vehicle. And the reason I ask that, the phone number that's listed on the back of that car does not go to either her or her husband. And I'm just trying to understand the connection between the phone number that says that vehicle is for sale, which is a South Florida mm -hmm. number, and if you have any details on that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know who the registered um, uh, owner of the vehicle is. Uh, we do believe it to be somebody that is, is in her family or connected to her. We don't feel that she's in some strange vehicle that she's never seen driving before. We think that the vehicle is connected to, and, and may not be registered to her, but connected to a vehicle that she typically drives. This is a whole series of very unsettling things here. The, if it wasn't for this guy and his passenger who rolled the video, you wouldn't even know that she's missing, right? So, so, I mean, the people who are, who are following behind this, witnessing this, are absolute heroes with providing yeah. critical information of a very dangerous and frightening situation. You think about it for a moment. It wasn't that, that long ago where we did not have cameras on our cell phones, and, and we always promote if you see something, say something. That's exactly what happened here. Not only happened here to record this incident, which gives us a great glimpse of what happened moments before uh, this murder occurred, but also the people down in Osceola County that hear these gunshots, uh, see the smoke from a vehicle, I mean, they, they call pretty quickly. You think about two citizen reports in an hour and 45 minutes in two different counties, uh, three counties away from each other. So when you watch this, it is incredibly frightening to watch the boldness of this, of this suspect, this, this perpetrator getting out of the car, wearing a hood, carrying a, carrying a weapon in broad daylight, getting in the vehicle, it, uh, it, it, again, that is why we encourage somebody who knows about the occupants of this vehicle, knows where this vehicle is at. We're encouraging you to contact us. Clearly, they should be uh, viewed as being armed and dangerous. Don't confront them uh, yourself. Contact authorities. Sounds like I suspect that, that where they told her to go is somewhere where they've been before. Uh, they seem very familiar with that area down there. I don't think mm -hmm. that this is randomly, hey, pull off the road. I think that they, or, now again, we don't know, but I think that as soon as she made that U-turn, uh, she was told quickly, hey, go back, this isn't the way we want to go, and they had that plan out and exact, knew exactly where they were going. It was, it was, it was on the way. Way, uh, you know something about it? 
Um, I would not be surprised. I haven't heard. I mean, I would encourage you to do, have her contact us. That may be helpful as far as the location's at. But I suspect that these killers are trying to get away from the police. So that's why at that time, if they're speeding down 417, if they're speeding down another roadway, we checked the databases and there was no report of aggressive drivers. There was no report of a suspicious vehicle that came into our, our call center. Uh, but again, if somebody saw that, that's, that's critical information that we want, not only what they saw, but exactly when and where they saw it. You're saying that she was in Seminole County to see family, but you couldn't find any family. Is there a, a was she just driving around the county for an hour? Did well, you saying that she was here? Or do you, yeah. Is there a destination? Well, let me be real specific. We were told she was here. Right. visiting family right. we were not able to confirm that she has any family member here at all so we were told that she was here Very visiting sus. family Very we have sus. no knowledge of her ever being in some i have another crazy story too after this um and i think this is another uh florida story you might have heard about this i was actually I, I the press conference popped up the other day at my feed and i was listening to it in the car it's pretty wild and to see how crazy and sick i don't know society is when we do that stream though i'm gonna i'm starting to make a thumbnail i want to go to the second channel after i'll transfer you guys and i'm just curious to do a test and see if i get notifications on that second uh, page so i'll keep you guys posted another crazy wild story Seminole county whatsoever we knew that she left south florida around noon it's very unlikely that she was coming here to stay. One, two o'clock, she's coming northbound. Like two o'clock, she's in Jupiter. She comes I-4 route, seen in downtown Orlando, ultimately gets off. So where she was going, we, we absolutely have no idea where she was going. I know there's a lot of things here that are unclear, but so what I want to make sure that I understand properly. Her husband says she was coming here to see family, yet provided no names of those family members that you can document. Correct. Husband says she's going to Central Florida to visit family, uh, did not provide names of the family members, and our research uh, through investigative tools can no find no family members uh, that, are, that, are, that are here. So we don't know who he was referring to when he says family. Uh, it, it could be friends that they call family, but we don't know of any biological family that's here in Central Florida that she was on her way to. Uh, quite frankly, we don't know why she was here or how long she was planning to stay here. The language part of is obscured because of the, the plastic order. Did any of the toll plazas or license plate readers throughout the counties, did they pick up what the license plate was? Has that led it to any clues? That's part of the investigation that, that I am not going to release right now. Um, you know, we want to call upon the public's assistance that if you know the, the operator of the vehicle, uh, as you can imagine, Jeff, we're following up on that right now. Our team is kind of looking at that, gathering as much information. Um, I, I don't want to be dishonest, and I don't want to disclose investigative techniques in exactly where we are. So that's something that we're working with. But so fundamentally, sure. this green car and whoever was in it could be anywhere. Correct. And that's why we're calling on the public's assistance right now as we work the investigative end with technology and police work. Uh, we hope, once again, citizens who've witnessed bizarre and suspicious behavior will step up like they have with the reporting of the, the initial incident and reporting of the murder scene, uh, which we believe to be the murder scene uh, uh, down in Osceola County. We're working the case because we don't know somewhere between here and there, she was alive and likely deceased uh, down there at their location. I want to underscore once again, um, I want to give you the most timely information as we possibly can. Uh, we need DNA and dental records to confirm that that's her. We need physical evidence to say that that's absolutely 100% the vehicle. But I would have to be pretty confident right now to come out and tell you this, that this is likely the vehicle, and this is likely uh, who it is. Once we get some additional details, again, there's a, a lot of unknowns, a lot of things that will leave people scratching your head, and I think the biggest is why. Because this wasn't just a random incident. They're ramming the car half a mile before that intersection. They get in the car, 
Uh, why, did, why, did, why did she and her husband not call 911? I don't yeah. know. Uh, why did she stop at the red light? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of things that we'll absolutely uh, never know. But this is a, tragically, a tragic incident nevertheless. I mean, a horrible, horrible, frightening situation. If you know the whereabouts of the vehicle or know who the drivers or the occupants were, please call us. So as far as your, your gut goes and as far as like a bigger picture of this, because carjackings happen, you know, obviously aside from this incident, if you're stopped at a red light and somebody taps on your window and they've got a gun in their hand, what, as a law enforcement uh, expert, are the best practices there? Do you gun it? Do you try Man, to I, get away? Do you just say, take the car, you know? Yeah. You well, I, I think that goes back to fight or flight or instinct and being prepared uh, to the best ability uh, that you possibly can. For some, uh, they're going to arm themselves with, with a firearm and they're going to respond in, in, in a likely type of response, right? They're going to exercise their right to carry arms. For others, they're going to hmm. they're going to flee the area, hit hit the Yeah, if you got that, if you got that, especially if your car's getting rammed and you're carrying, you got that thing on you, uh, yeah, some people are probably going to shoot back or even let you walk right up. I don't know if they, I don't know if I don't know if you would let them walk right up because the guy had a gun too. I mean, you could let them walk right up and then pop them. I don't know. Or we'll just dip. Gas, regardless if there's a traffic signal there, and, and call nine one, do something. I think that that uh, there are so many factors and circumstances. I think that the main message is be aware of your surroundings constantly and respond and react and do something to the best yeah. of your ability and what yeah. you feel most comfortable with. Um, I mean, if he walks up to, to the vehicle like that, if did she see him coming up? I mean, we don't know. And by the time that you have a gun in your face, it's really almost too late to, to do anything, right? So again, uh, we don't know, but I know that, that you always have to constantly think. And I think that this story right here and the stories that we see across the country uh, make us all go back and say, if something I like this happened to me, too. what would yeah, I do and how yeah. would I respond? I know I know, I do it every time I, I, I see these tragedies. Sure. The body that you found in the vehicle, just two quick questions. A, was it in the driver's seat? Is that where the, the body was found? And then two, has other jurisdictions had similar cases like this, particularly down in South Florida? Are they part of this investigation anyway? Uh, there's no link to any other investigation that we're aware of at this time. It'd be early in, in, in our investigation to kind of make that nexus to, to what's going on there. I'm not saying it's impossible, we just don't have that connection uh, yet. I don't know where inside the vehicle the body was located. I mean, that was a pretty uh, a damaged crime scene, right? If it's, if it's damaged to the point where you can't even tell if it's the Dodge Durango or not. So I don't know exactly where the body was, was positioned uh, at that scene. Yeah. Pictures. Do you see her in the car driving? Is that why you're so sure that the timeline of events between when she got off there and the fire call, uh, is that why you're making that? It, it, um, it takes a little bit more time. I mean, there are clearly uh, technology license plate readers. I mean, we used to not talk about it, but there's license plate readers everywhere. Uh, some of this information is picked up from license plate readers that gives timely feedback into various sources of locations. It takes a little bit more time to get the video evidence from the toll and the toll plazas and all that, and that's something that we're working on now. So where she was at, obviously, if we had the transponder, it would be a little bit easier, but because of that fire, all of that stuff is just absolutely gone. So. Oh, I, 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 listen, any piece of evidence, I, I hope that cameras and technology and, look, we, we live in a, a, a time where, where we're being recorded constantly around us. So. But that's one of the things that we'll obviously look at to see if we can get that camera to, to see if she's still in the driver's seat, to see if we can see him in the back seat. I mean, we're going we're gonna to follow up on, on all of that, but some of that takes court order, and then you've got other people to, to kind of respond back to it. But I tell you, that's towards the top of our list, clearly. Is the husband working on the investigation? Because this is a violent case, right? It's a lot of stuff that didn't fix. So what, what do you say about this case? Yeah, so... So the husband is, is uh, uh, working with us. Uh, he's not working on the investigation. We don't involve family members uh, uh, doing that. He's providing us as much information as he, 
he possibly can. And that's one of the sources that we'll continue to talk to as we try to put the pieces of the puzzle together and find out uh, what goes on. But, but at this point, it's, uh, you can imagine if you, you get word of a spouse, a family member, uh, just 19 hours ago, go, kind of going through this thing, or even less than that. But, but he is working with us, and he's cooperating with our detectives and investigators. How many, how many suspects are the police looking for? Well, it's hard because when you look at the video, you don't know how many people are inside that green Acura, right? Uh, you can conclude that there's at least two. There's a driver, and and there's at least one person that got out of the green Acura. Uh, but I don't know if there, there may have been four people inside the Acura. We just simply don't know, and that's why we want the public's uh, support to help us out. So I've answered everything that I can possibly answer. I've given you kind of kind of where we're at now, try to paint a story as far as the timeline goes. We are taking the lead on this homicide uh, investigation here at the Seminole County Sheriff's Office, and when we get more information, we'll make sure that we can provide that. I do want to emphasize the importance uh, of, of, of cooperation because your offices, your stations uh, broke in to your newscasts and got this out there immediately. Uh, and I'm incredibly, the citizens of, of our Central Florida community are incredibly thankful for that because we watched it when, it when it broke in. And a lot of the news desks and the anchors really weren't even sure what was going to be played on there. So I want to thank you for getting that information out there. I want to thank you for your patience as we've tried to put the pieces of this together. Thank you. It was immediate. It was nearly immediate. Um, they, they, one was recording, one was driving. They called it in. Um, it was right around 5.30 in the afternoon. I think our first unit was six or seven minutes after that, making contact with them at that location. So. Okay. Crazy, 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 crazy. I almost feel like, I don't know, I wonder if it's drugs or like um, owing money. You know, uh, there there was this guy that was an airplane mechanic. Some of you guys might remember that I covered here in South Florida. And the guy one day he just disappears after work. And I don't remember. I forgot. Did he owe money or, or he went to collect money that was owed to him, I thought. And then I want to pay him back. And so they killed him. I'm going to show you the video again, this video where this woman, um, which is wild, bro. Crazy. Right there in the middle, right in the day. Never called the cops. Bam. Anna said I had a police in an unmarked vehicle flash me to stop. And I kept driving till... I pulled over to the gas station to talk to them. It was nighttime. Lot of mud. All right, so we're gonna let me set up the second stream. Apparently, YouTube's having issues. People are people are saying it's on all the channels. I don't know. So um, let me set this up real quick here. Bum, 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 bum. And this story is about some psychopath. Oh, by the way, rest in peace to this lady. Let me see. Did I download the picture? Here's the video. I don't know what the situation was. Something says I think the, the it's a little bit weird. The the husband's reaction too is kind of weird to me. Her name is Catherine Aguavias, if that's how you say it. Thirty one years old, all the way out of uh, some homestead. All the way out, they lived in homestead, but all the way by Orlando, Florida, though. 
way out there. Um, all right, let me set this up. This next one, so again, I heard this the other day, and I was like, man, this shit's wild. Um, this guy that's a pre-med student, some of you guys might have heard of this. One day, I, I think his mother wanted to hang out. They told the whole story. She's like, oh, why don't you come like see me or something? And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll come. And he goes, shows up to the mom's house. Oh, oh, she's a teacher. Um, I really not here. They say a very nice lady. This dude showed up there. There's a ring camera, everything. Dude, knock on the door. And kills his mother, starts stabbing her. Now, I think the 911 calls out. You see the ring cam. Dude looks crazy, disheveled. And he didn't, he didn't have no reason for doing it. He, he just said he just always wanted to do it. He's just always, he just, what he said, he's just always wanted to do it. So he drove, killed his mother, stabbed her like over 70 something times. And at some point, because you know, they say these people that start stabbing multiple times, or I think about like the Kohlberger case, they say sometimes these people cut themselves in stabbing, you know? So this guy stabbed himself, and he said that he wanted to ask his mother for Neil Sporn, but he realized she was dead. Ain't that some shit? Oh, man, these freaking crazy ass people. Um, all right. So, again, alternatives for notifications, guys, again, because the notifications aren't working properly right now. You're going to get this shit later tonight when you're sleeping. Um, there's an email list, which I'm trying to use. It's kind of a, like it takes a lot of somewhat of an effort to like sit there and make a thing and email it. But I'm working on it. I'll send the emails out. And you, or you could join Discord, which is free. Just there's an app on there. Or follow me on Twitter. I don't even know if the Twitter thing works. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, wherever. All right, I'm going to see you guys in a few minutes. I'm going to start the next stream in 10 minutes. Oh, there might be. I'm not going to get my hopes up. There could be a chase. I'm going to start it like in 10 minutes. I just I need to get this dinner situation figured out uh, for the family. So I'm going to set it for 10 minutes from now, just so I can figure out what uh, I got to order this stuff. That's exactly who I'm going to play. Grady Judge did amazing. Amazing. All right. I'll see you guys in a few. I love you. I love you. I feel like we need to do something fun. More 17. Thank you for the 13 months. Says, hey, Mel, Sandra McCarty. Thank you for the membership. Appreciate that. Luffy is Luffy in the chat. Luffy, I'm going to have to hit you up too with a question, a tech question. For mama this weekend because we're gonna get her a computer at Best Buy. Nothing crazy, just she her she she's literally running Windows. Which one is it? I don't know. It's not. It's not even ten. What's the one before that? She she went on like a really bad. Her computer's like bad, bad. We gotta fix it. It's having problems. So, but I'll see you guys in like ten minutes. All right, I'll transfer you. Love you. Boop, boop, boop.